Hello everyone, Amod here from your target common YouTube channel and in this video we will learn about an important class provided by java.util package called arrays. This arrays class contains multiple static methods which can be used to manipulate arrays. We can create a copy of the arrays, we can search for an element in the array, we can print the array without for loop. So we have a lot of things. So let's get started. Suppose we have a string array which consists of some elements. As you can see here, this string array consists of four elements. So to create an array, we need to provide the type and same thing we need to provide right hand side as well. But this is optional. We can remove this part. This is also one way to create the array. Suppose if I want to print the content of this array. So let me use this out directly and pass this array one. Let me show you what it will print. So you can see it is printing some difference value which we don't want. We require elements to be printed. For this we require to use for loop. So let me quickly write a for loop. Let me run and show you. So now here you can see it is printing the elements of the array. But with the arrays class we can directly print the elements. Arrays class provides one method called toString. And you can see this method is overloaded method. So here just I need to pass the array 1. You can see the return type of this toString method is string. So I can directly use the sysout. Let me run and show you whether it is printing the elements of array or not. You can see it is printing the elements of the array. Suppose we have two dimensional array or nested arrays. How can we print? that so let me quickly create one two dimensional array first so here you can see i've created one two dimensional array suppose i want to print the content of my two dimensional array so i will call the same thing whatever we learn using the two string method provided by array class let me quickly pass the array to here and run the program i will comment the previous one so here you can see it is printing difference thing two string method works for single dimensional array for the multi-dimensional or nested array we need to use some different method that is called deep to string method. Let me run the program quickly and this time you can see it is printing the elements properly. Suppose we have already one existing string array and from this array I want to create another array. That means we can copy the content of this array and create a new array. For that we have a method called copy of. So we need to call arrays dot copy of. So you can see we have so many overloaded method of copy of and copy of range. So the difference here in the copy of range you need to provide the starting and end index but for the copy of method you just need to pass the final length so obviously it will start from the beginning of the index so let me start with the copy of range first i want to create a copy from array 1 and i want to copy from first index to fourth index so please note here the fourth one will not be included and this will return me a string array which i will print using the true string method let me run this program and see whether it is copying the element or not so here you can see it is printing the three elements what will happen if you pass the index which does not exist, I pass 10. Let me show you what will be the behavior in this case. I will run the program. So here you can see it is not throwing any error. So it is started copying from the first index and it copied whenever it finds the values. And for the remaining one, it padded with null. Why null? Because the default value of the string is the null. If we have integer array, it will be filled with the zero because zero is the default value of integer. Similarly, we have another method called copy of. In this copy of method, you just need to provide the final length. Suppose I pass two, so it will create an array by copying first two elements from the given array. Let me run and show you. So here you can see it copies only two elements. So that is the difference between copy of range and copy of method. Suppose we have a string array and I want to update the value of each element to the same value. Here we have some distinct values, right? But I want every value should be amount only. We have a method called fill. Here you need to pass the target array and then you need to pass the which element you want to have. So maybe amount. The return type of fill method is wide because it is muting the same array. So if I print array one now, it will give me the same elements. So here you can see it is giving the same elements. Here you can see I replace every word with the same word. But if your requirement is to have some randomly generated values. For that we have another method called set all. So we need to call arrays dot set all pass the resultant array. And here I need to write the lambda expression which will feed the values. So here it will give every index. And for every index we need to write the logic and feed the value. Suppose I want to generate some random string. So I need to use index this is just the variable name i can give anything we need to use arrow and since we are going to write multiple 
statement so i need to use curly braces i want to generate some random values so i will call random of, of util package and let me write some lengthy way of generating some random characters so suppose i want to generate a random character from this string so in the random class we have method called next int and here i need to pass the bound i will pass the length of this abc string so whatever integer it generates i am going to extract the character from there so i need to use abc dot care at and this will return a character so i will simply convert to a string using the character class and i need to use the return statement here for every index it will run this code and it will get a new string let me run and show you so here you can see it has replaced the values in the array one suppose we have a string array and i want to convert this string array to list so for that we have a method called as list and here you just need to pass the string array or whatever array you have and it will give you the same type of list means list of string because this is a string array let me quickly print the list so here you can see it has created the list from this string array but there is some limitations if i try to add the element in this array let's see what happens array one list dot add let me add a new element and print it again run it you can see it is showing some unsupported operation exception so whenever we are converting any array to list we cannot perform any modifications means we cannot add or remove the elements that is fixed length suppose we have two string arrays and if you want to check whether both the arrays are equal or not for that we have method equal again these methods are overloaded to accommodate different types of arrays so to pass the array one comma array two and return type of this equals method is boolean let me run and show you so you can see it is printing true because both the arrays are same can we use equals method to compare multi-dimensional array let me try so here i have two dimensional arrays and i am calling the equals method let me run and you can see both the arrays are same but still it is giving me false because for the multi-dimensional array we cannot use equals method we have another method called deep equals let me run the program now and you can see it is printing true suppose you have a string array and you want to sort it let me use arrays dot sort and just pass the array so again this method will mutate the original array so i can print the sorted array now you can see it is sorted suppose you want to sort it in reverse order for that you need to pass the comparator dot reverse order dot solve let me print it suppose if you want to search for an element in the array for that also we have one method in array class called binary search but you need to understand here that binary search will work only if the array is sorted so here i have already sorted the array let me apply binary search but before that i need to comment this reverse order let me search for element so we have array dot binary search pass the array in which you want to search for the element suppose i want to search for mec the return tab of this binary is index in which element is found let me directly print the value let me run and show you what it is printing so you can see mse is returning at second index but suppose if my array is sorted in reverse order let me comment the default sorting order and let me uncomment the reverse order and I will search for MSC. Let me run and show you. So here you can see it is returning 1 which is the correct index. Let me search for Amod in the array. So here you can see it is showing minus 1. Why? And minus 1 will be returned when element is not found. But you can see Amod is clearly present in this array. Then why it is returning minus 1? Since we have sorted the array in descending order or reverse order. So whenever we are looking for the element using the binary search. I need to explicitly say that this array is sorted in reverse order. So again I need to pass comparator dot reverse order. Let me run the program now and see whether it is returning the correct index or not. So now you can see it is returning 3 which is the correct position for Amod in the array. We don't have any method in the array class which can search for an element in the unsorted array. So every time you need to sort the array and then search for the element using the binary search method. Suppose we have a string array and I want to manipulate the values using the streams. So for that we have method called stream in the array class. Pass the array and here I can call any stream methods. Suppose I will call map and I want to convert every element of the array to capital letter so value dot to uppercase and I want to collect it as, as a string using the delimiter dash or anything so what I am doing basically here all the elements of this array will be converted to uppercase and then will be appended using the delimiter dash and this will return me a string 
so that I can directly print. Let me run the program. So here you can see all the elements are converted to uppercase and appended with the dash. Here you can see it is showing some warning that this lambda can be replaced with the method difference. That means instead of writing this much code, we can use the method difference means use the class name, give the two columns and give the method name only. No need to pass the parentheses. This is called method difference. So that's all in this video. If you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.